Welcome to an enlightening podcast from IslamPodcasts.com. We encourage our listeners to please comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please remind your family and friends to also visit IslamPodcasts.com for engaging discussions on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, Sira, and much more. Inshallah, today uh, we will start our uh, seventh uh, session in our, uh, for the Seerah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, today we will um, start covering uh, the part of the Meccan period of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam life uh, uh, in the part of the Prophethood, where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started doing the da'wah to his uh, tribesmen and the people who were close to him. And uh, that da'wah entered into the phase where Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went openly. Uh, it was not restricted to only the people who were close to him. Uh, and uh, we'll go as far as we can today, inshallah, in the allotted time, and uh, then we'll continue uh, the, the Meccan period. It, it is, uh, uh, there's a lot of things, inshallah, in the Meccan period that we will be covering in the coming weeks. Um, uh, the, when, when the ayat of uh, Surah Al-Shura, they reveal to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that says, وَأَنذَرْ عَشِيرَتَكَ لَقْرَبِينَ وَخْفَرْ جَنَاحَكَ لِمَنَتَّ بَعَكَ مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Rasulullah Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala commanded Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that to warn his tribes, uh, tribesmen and the one who were close to him. And he said, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala said, and lower your wings to those who follow you of the believers. Uh, and uh, we have seen the very similar uh, wordings. Uh, when Luqman when he was uh, giving uh, the advice to his son how to behave uh, with uh, with your parents when uh, they, they grow older also. Um, so here um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about first of all uh, commanding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to expand his da'wah, expand his call to more than just a very close people to him, rather go to his tribesmen and uh, and other close ones besides the very close relatives uh, and very close friends. Uh, here, uh, in, in this, uh, this surah, Surah Al-Shura, not only talks about uh, this, uh, this command, but besides that, the surah has some interesting uh, uh, stories mentioned uh, that includes the story of Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, and uh, actually it goes and shows the, his phases the way, the steps that Musa والسلام, took to convey his message among the Bani Israel and the people of the Fir'aun. Uh, and besides that, not only that it talks about the struggle of Musa والسلام, but also the endings of uh, some of the other nations to whom Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sent the messengers, like uh, uh, the people of Nuh salam, Ad, Thamud, uh, Luth, and uh, uh, even uh, Ahlul Aika. The people of uh, uh, the companions of the Lord, the people who were actually worshiping tree. Uh, so these are some of the other stories I mentioned. And uh, as we are very well aware of, uh, the Quran can be divided into like three different subjects if you go by subject-wise. One is about the uh, the aqidah or iman. Uh, other part deals with the qasas, uh, the stories which are mentioned. Uh, and the third part is about the ahkam. When it comes to the stories which are mentioned in the Quran. They are, uh, in general, uh, are revealed for the ibra, for the lessons that we can learn from those stories. Whether they are the stories of the prophets or the righteous people, or the prof- uh, uh, or the stories of the evil people, which uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has mentioned in the Quran as well. So here, when we, for example, when we read those stories of uh, the nations to whom the different prophets are sent, and the, the one who dis- disobeyed 
the prophets and uh, prophets of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their, uh, their ending was also mentioned in the Quran. So we can get the ibrah and we don't repeat the same mistakes. Now, <clears throat> when Rasulullah uh, uh, Rasulullah uh, was given this ayah, uh, there are a couple of different incidents are mentioned in the seerah and the ah- books of hadith. One of them is uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He started calling his very close uh, close tribes, which is uh, Bani Hashim, and within the Bani Hashim, he called Bani Abd- Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Munaf, and he called them up and he wanted to call for his message. So don't forget that, as we talked about last time also, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu in the first three years of the dawah, even though. He was not going openly among the people and all those things. The people were aware of it. That Rasulullah was calling for a different message. And he is not, he's calling people not to worship the idols. But they still, they were not going up against Rasulullah in the first three years. When the, the call was in privacy. And uh, it was more towards the individuals. So there's this a distinction between a da'wah that is done to individuals and the da'wah that is given to a society. And when we talk about individual and society, we have to understand what does it mean by individuals and what does it mean by a society. Like, for example, when we're talking here, we're still talking to some individuals here. Society is a different phenomena, and we have to understand the reality of that. And uh, as in the last uh, topic, the last lecture, we discussed about the, what is the hukum shari. And we talked about also hukum shari for that to, for, for us to understand to apply. First, we have to understand the reality, whichever reality we're discussing, and on that reality, the hukum of Allah that it has to be applied accordingly. You cannot you cannot apply a wrong hukum on the wrong reality. So both the things have to match. So when we talk about individuals and the society, they have to be understood well. So we will be talking the very same way when we are talking about changing a person that is an individual. And when we're talking about changing a, a society, then, the, then, then we have to know what does it mean by society. Because sometimes people think of it, society means that if you change all the individuals, then you will be able to change the society. But is this really a society? So for that, it is important to understand the definition of a society, and it is a reality we're discussing. So you will not find a hadith of Rasulullah or the, Quran, the Quranic ayah that will be explaining exactly the component of a society. This is a reality that you study. For example, when you say this is a phone, it's a, it's a reality. Why do you call that specific device as a phone? Because this phone is, uh, has, has certain attributes. And if those things are there, you call that a telephone or a phone, cell phone. And then you apply the reality of that, and then you know whether it's halal or haram to use it or not. Similarly, when we talk about society change, and this, the reason I'm talking about this a little bit uh, uh, more uh, within the serial topic, so we understand when Rasulullah was addressing the society, what, what it means. So when we say a society, when Rasulullah was addressing it, society means it's the people are component of a society. But those people, when they are living together for, uh, with permanent relationships, they have to be relationships among the people. And those relationships are built on a basis. The basis could be any creed, whether it's a creed of Islam, or it could be a creed of any other ism than Islam. And from the, those creeds, a system of life comes out, and that system of life regulates the lives of the people. And when those systems of lives are implemented over the people, that generate emotions of the people, and people's likes and dislikes become accordingly. That's what it means by a society. So if we are talking about society, all these components have to be addressed. Not just some, some, some individuals, and we think as if they will change a society. So the society can only be changed when the, all the components of the societies are, societies are addressed. And if there are any questions about this, inshallah, I will, uh, uh, I will answer them in, uh, in the question and answer session as well. Now here the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the da'wah, moved from some individuals now towards going openly. Okay? So we will see that the stance of the people also change. This is what it changed the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the response of the Quraysh as well. 
Okay. So when these ayat were revealed, Rasulullah so Sallallahu called his uh, tribesmen of Bani Hashim with a group of Bani Abdul Muttalib and Bani Abdul Munaf. When they gathered, and there were about, uh, uh, some of the reports talk about there were about 40, 45 people uh, gathered, and Rasulullah Sallallahu was about to talk, and Abu Lahab disrupted Rasulullah Sallallahu And he did not allow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to speak. Rather, he started speaking, and he started actually saying things against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he prevented Rasulullah Sallallahu to say anything here. Now, Rasulullah Sallallahu he tried again. And now, some of the reports talk about he tried three times, some of them talked about it the other time, whatever the number was. When Rasulullah Sallallahu was able to talk, the hadith which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari, that talks about that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he, uh, he started talking. And uh, actually, this is not from the Bukhari. This is also from uh, Ibn Hisham, I believe, mentioned this. Okay, so uh, here Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he started saying, Alhamdulillah, Ahmaduhu wa astainu wa awminu wa tawakkalu alayhi wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la. And this is something that you hear in the khutubs also. When the Imam gets up and he starts giving the khutbah and uh, he recites a similar kind of uh, kalimat, right? So Rasulullah sallallahu starts saying this and uh, he starts saying, Inna ra'idha la yakdibu ahlahu. That ra'id, ra'id is a guide. He does not lie to his family. Or ahlahu or his people. people. Wallahi alladhi la ilaha illahu. And by Allah, uh, he say, uh, who is, there is nobody worthy of worship except him. Inni Rasulullah. And uh, uh, Rasulullah said, Indeed, I am the messenger of Allah. Ilaykum khasa. And I am a messenger of Allah, especially for you, particularly for you. Wa nasi amma. And the people in general uh, as well. See? So here Rasulullah was very clear that he's not only a messenger for his own people or something. Rather, he is the messenger for everybody, all the people at large. As we discussed before, other prophets, they were sent for specific nations, while Rasulullah was unique in the sense that he was sent for Ammatul Nas, for all the people. And then Rasulullah started talking about that, that uh, by Allah, that you can die while you're sleeping. And uh, <coughs> he said, but, uh, I swear by Allah that there is no God but, but He and that I have been sent as a messenger of you, uh, a messenger to you in particular and to all the people in general. I swear by Allah you will die just as you sleep. You will re- be resurrected just as you wake up. And you will be called to account for your deeds. It is then uh, either the Jannah or the Naat, which is forever, both of them. Jannah or Naat, Jannah abadan, or abadan. That the Jannah is forever and so is the Jahannam. So now Abu, Abu, La, Abu Talib is the one who responded. And Abu Talib said, we love to help you accept your, and accept your advice and believe in your words. These are your kind kinspeople. And he's saying that whom you have collected and I am one of them. But I am the fa- fastest to do what you like. Do what you have been ordered. I shall protect and defend you. But I can't quit the religion of Abdul, Abdul Muttal. So this was the response of Abu Talib. He said he was going to protect Rasulullah Sallallahu defend Rasulullah and he, he said, go and do what you have to do, except that he is not going to accept the uh, meaning he will not convert and he will continue to follow the, the religion of his father, Abdul Muttalib. Now, upon hearing this, Abu Lahab, he, uh, he got angry. And now he is saying to, uh, to Abu Talib that uh, he's saying that, so Allah, that it is a bad thing. You must stop him, stop Rasulullah before the other people will stop. So Abu Talib said, however, he answered, I swear by Allah to protect him as long as I live. So Abu Talib, even though he was not a Muslim, but he swore that he will protect Rasulullah Now, the Bukhari was mentioned about this, uh, uh, when it talks about when the, the, this ayah was revealed. So uh, Bukhari is talking about another hadith in which uh, we hear about, uh, when Rasul, we know when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, he, mount, 
he got on the Mount of Al Safa, and over there he started calling. When the, these ayah uh, under Ashir al Aqrabin was revealed, he got on the uh, Mount Safa and he started calling uh, all the different tribes. And, and, and the way it starts off, um, it says like uh, Ya Sabaha. In Arabic, when you hear Ya Sabaha, it is like a call. You, there's something big is happening. And you want to warn the people. Like somebody is going to attack or something. So you start calling people and everybody starts gathering. That you are warning them something, some, about something big you have to announce. It's an announcement you want to make. So he's saying, Ya Sabah. So now here, uh, when he said, and he started calling, and he says, O Bani Fahir, O Bani Adi. And, uh, and he starts saying different tribes of the Quraysh, he gathered them. And uh, he asked them, that uh, if I tell you, if I tell you in the valley that there are some, some soldiers or there are some uh, uh, horsemen, they are about to attack, would you accept? And, uh, they, uh, and they said yes, because Rasulullah was famous to be uh, uh, a sadiq, the one who is truthful. Now, upon hearing this, uh, Abu Lahab is the one who was also there. He said, Rasulullah uh, continued on, he said, he warned them about, uh, about the punishment of the hellfire. And he warned them about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the one who should be worshipped. If you're not, basically, uh, he started pre- uh, giving the da'wah about Islam. When Abu Lahab they heard this, because uh, this is, uh, he was aware of Rasulullah's message, so he said, Tabba laka sa'ir al yawm ali hadha jama'atana. That he said, that uh, perish you all, day, your, uh, you all day. Have you, have you summoned us or have you gathered us for such a thing? Is this what you have gathered us for? On this uh, saying of Abu Lahab, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the ayah, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab. So we hear this surah. We have to have uh, some context of it. When we read the surah, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab. The, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, perish the hands of Abu Lahab. He, or he will be ruined. That's what the expression means. Basically. It's not just the hands we're talking about. They're talking about the destruction of Abu Lahab. And not only Abu Lahab, but the ayah can be to talk about his wife as well. That she will be in the hellfire as well. So uh, now, interesting thing to remember here is Abu Lahab was not only the uncle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His two sons were married to two of the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. So, when Rasulullah is reciting these ayat, he is talking about the father-in-law and the mother-in-law of two of his daughters as well. And we are aware of it in our cultures, how the things work. And we talked about even the Arab culture also. Uh, prior to Jahiliya, how much people are attached to their tribes, attached to their families, and they are willing to do anything. Now Rasulullah is going up against everything. You're talking about your own uncle and the one who is, uh, whose kids are married to, uh, the sons are married to the two of the daughters of Rasulullah himself. So, and, and we will see later on the consequences of that also. Just Rasulullah was calling for this message, uh, ended up Abu Lahab ordering his sons to divorce the daughters of Rasulullah which they did it actually later on when we get to that point, inshallah. Now, this was one of the narration, and a similar narration is given by uh, uh, Imam Muslim in, in, in his Sahih Muslim, uh, in which it gives a little bit more detail like that that Rasulullah was calling this way: "O oh, Quraysh, rescue yourselves from the fire." In Qadu. Protect yourself from the fire. And he's calling by name. O people of Bani Ka'ab, rescue yourself from the, from the fire. And then not like this. Even he's saying, O Fatima, of the daughter of Rasulullah of Muhammad Wasallam, rescue yourself. And I have no power to protect you from Allah in anything except that what I sustain relationship with you. Okay? So now, he, that, so this is the Sahih Muslims uh, narration about the very same thing. So this was still very to the close people. Now, after that, the da'wah actually entered into more tougher stages. 
where Allah Azza wa Jal revealed in Surah Al-Hajr. <coughs> where Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la says, Fasda bima tu'mar wa'arid ala al-mushrikeen. The Fasda, now you will proclaim openly. And this is like a, uh, uh, the way you're calling the people, like you're making cracks in the walls. It's not just uh, uh, here or there. No, you're going openly and keeping nothing to yourself. Whatever Allah has revealed, you're going to the people and telling them. The, uh, the, um, the meaning of the ayah, uh, first da' bima tawmur al mashakin therefore proclaim openly Allah's message, that which you are commanded, and turn away from the mushrikeen, from the uh, polytheists. Now, uh, so from, from there on, it's not only this ayah, and we just saw that Tabbat Yada Abi Lahab was revealed, talking about one of the leaders of the Quraysh. Even though he was the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu but he's one of the leaders. Now, ayat like this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, إِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبَدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ حَسَبُ جَهَنَّمَا أَنْتُمْ لَهَا وَارِدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, indeed you and what you worship, they both will go become the hasabu the jahannam, meaning the fuel of the, the jahannam, fuel of the hellfire. Not only that they will go into the fire, rather they will become the fuel, meaning that will make the fire more to grow. So uh, now, similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in Surah uh, Surah Al now here, Allah uh, is narrating the story of Shu'ib In this story, we know the, the nation of Shu'ib was the one who used to cheat in, uh, in, uh, in weighing the goods. When they are doing the buying and selling, they used to cheat. Now here, interesting thing is, the people of Shu'ib is saying, Oh Shu'ib, does your prayer command you? Does your salah? See, he's talking about the salah. Command you that we should leave what our fathers worship or not do with our wealth what we please. Because he was targeting, telling them what you're doing is wrong in your uh, buying and selling. So we always think of a salah only means that we come to do the Salat al-Isha right now. So that's what it means by Salah only. Or we do five times prayers. Salah is not... Even the, 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 <coughs> the people who were rejecting, Shu'ib alayhi salam, they understood well. That the way same Salah is not only asking them to worship, like the way we worship, but rather it is talking about the other ways of life, the, the actions that we do in our life. So all the actions have to be according to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are some of the Mufassirin discuss... The, the subject of what does Salah mean also, and they go into the detail of even the Salah, in some cases means the whole deen as well. So it cannot be just taken as just Salah, the ritualistic Salah only. Okay, <clears throat> and then some other ayat revealed, with like Allah Subh'ana says, وَيْلُلُّ الْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اكْتَالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتَوْفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ وَزُنُهُمْ يُخْسَرُونَ That uh, woe to the people, who, uh, who cheat, meaning when they are buying and selling, uh, they, they, they cheat and their, uh, they, they give less. Uh, when, they are, when they're giving, they give less. When they're taking, they take, take the complete amount they're supposed to take. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, saying the destruction to those people. And all these ayat are maki ayat. Okay? So it's not only Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is talking about that we're talking about the, he's talking about just worship one God, and that's the thing that made made the Quraysh angry. Yes, there was the thing. Main thing was to worship one Allah, but it does not mean only ritualistic kind of ibadah only. Rather, that La ilaha illallah meant to take Allah Azza wa Jal above everything in, in 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 all aspects of life, and that's the thing that triggered the Quraysh to go against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went openly in the society. Now openly going into society meaning now he is addressing the whole society needs to be changed. Not just individuals to be changed. And when the whole society needs to be changed, it means the individuals 
It means the creed of the people. It means the system that they are, that they are implementing over the people. And it will change the, their emotions regarding the good and the bad, what they like and what they dislike. All these things will change. And that's what Rasulullah was addressing now when he is going openly among the people. And that's what he's trying to change here. So now when this call entered into this phase that he's going openly among the people, then we realize that why the Quraysh was so adamant about stopping Rasulullah's call now. Because now they see the Rasulullah is talking about this whole, not all the norms of the society have to be changed. All the ways of the people they're living, they have to be changed. They did not have issues of worshipping more gods. They were already worshipping 360 gods. Bring one more. The issue was not that. The issue was, they did not like that Rasulullah is bringing up there is to be one God to be worshipped. And worship means actually not only the, the ritualistic ones that we always think of. Rather, we know that in Islam, worship means all the actions are according to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As a matter of fact, when we say the word Muslim, Muslim means the one who submits to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just the one who does prayers and who does the zakah and the hajj and the, and, and the fasting, rather he submit completely to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Now, <clears throat> when Rasulullah uh, uh, started calling the people like this, now the Quraysh actually, what they did was, they, uh, they started twisting, uh, they started uh, work against the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu as well. In the beginning, they were trying to show to the people that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu was, uh, uh, I mean, especially when, uh, when the, the season of Hajj was coming, and they knew that Rasulullah sallallahu is calling people towards Islam, and he's saying things against the gods that they are worshipping, and the norms of the society, like when it talks about the Wailul al Mutafafin, they're talking about the economic system that existed at that time, or talking about the norm of, or, or at least some of the people who were burying their daughters alive, that they will be questioned on the Day of Judgment, or when Rasulullah is talking about that their God and themselves, they will become the fuel of the hellfire, uh, and, the, and their leaders. So now they, they got a little bit. Uh, uh, they start thinking about now people will be coming during the time of the Hajj from outside of the Mecca. Now, how, what should we do to prevent this call to spread outside the Mecca as well? Because they were aware of it. So Allah was not only calling people towards Islam who were only the, the, the family members or the tribesmen, rather he started already going to the people who were uh, the, uh, the rest of the people in the Jazirat al but now everybody will be coming uh, to the Mecca, to the Kaaba, and uh, from the surrounding areas also. And Rasulullah will approach them as well. So to stop Rasulullah to approach these pe- uh, these people as well, they started plotting against Rasulullah and uh, they actually went to Walid bin Mughira and they asked him that what should we do with Rasulullah now? We have to do something. To stop this call to be spread. Now, they ask him, why don't we do this? Why don't we call Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a kahin? A kahin, uh, in, in Urdu, we also use the word kahin. In Ar- it's an Arabic word. Uh, which, which means actually uh, a future teller or fortune teller. So when uh, uh, Walid al was given the suggestion, he said, no, we cannot use this against Rasulullah because we know what the kahin looks like, what he does. You know that normally when you, uh, when you hear about these people and here, when you talk about those uh, uh, people who talk about their, they know the future and stuff, they normally are very weird looking people, number one, right? And they have like a, in, in, in the United States, they have like, a, what do you call those uh, things? Crystal ball. Right? So crystal ball, they, have, they will put their hands and uh, they will make strange faces and they will be murmuring something that you cannot understand what the heck they're talking about. They act strange. 
And the very same thing was during that time as well, whether it was they had a crystal ball or not, but they used to murmur and strange kind of words would come out of their mouth. And they said, look, we can, he said, we don't see these attributes in Rasulullah So if we say this, something like this, they will reject it. Okay? So if you want to make some lie against Rasulullah or to prevent people to go towards Rasulullah, you have to come up with some excuse that matches him at least. Okay? So then he rejected it. Then they said, okay, why don't we call him a poet, a shair? So now, if, if you remember, we talked about this Arabs were very much into their language. And they knew what the poetry is. And we cannot, we, they, they, they knew what the Quran is. It doesn't look like any poetry. It doesn't look like uh, 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 a shair. So uh, and he said, we know that it is not poetry. So the Arabs would know. What we are trying to accuse him of, it does not match his reality. So we cannot call him a shari. So he said, okay, why don't we call him uh, a magician? And he said, well, we cannot call him a magician either. Because we know that magicians are the one, they, they, they tie the knots on different things and they blow on it or uh, they do strange kind of things, whether they have a voodoo doll or something, he did not mention about that, but... Even today, when we talk about magician, magicians do certain things. So for a person to match the traits of a magician, he has to do something like it, right? So at least there will be some truth. So they can mix it up and tell the people this is what he does. So they said, but he, is, he doesn't look like a, magi- uh, a magician either. Then they said, okay, why don't we call him a crazy person, Majnoon? But they say, well, we know he's not Majnoon. He's not crazy. And uh, uh, again, this will not match. Now, but the, after thinking and all that, he agreed that, okay, you know what, we will call him um, uh, a sahir, a magician. But with, the, with a little bit of a twist. Not the sahir that normally people think of. He is the sahir who does what? Who breaks away the husband from his wife. Or son from his far parents. Or a man from his clan. And that's what kind of seemed like the right thing from his perspective. That okay, a person becomes a Muslim, وَعَارِدًا المشركين. He separates himself from the mushrikeen. Not that he's disconnecting, not that he's not fulfilling the right of a father to the parents or something, but he's not worshipping the same God that the other ones were worshipping. He's not acting the same way that the, the rest of the people were acting. So he said, okay, you know, this kind of a match, so we'll use this. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about Walid al Mughira, that he stopped thinking and estimating. Uh, he, uh, the, 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 that, uh, that, uh, so may he be destroyed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, uh, how he uh, deliberated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is repeating that. Thumma nadara. Nadara, nadara in Arabic to mean see, but in Urdu also means see, but it does not mean nadara always means see. It actually means to think and ponder as well. So he is thinking, pondering. That then he frowned and uh, he, he turned back and he was, you know, the person who's thinking, turning away here, there, and uh, his, uh, you see it on his forehead, all the, the, the frowning is happening. This is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually. Uh, kind of a giving a graphic, uh, a graphical way of showing how Walid ibn Mughira was acting at that time. And then he said, فَقَالَ إِنَّ هَذَا إِلَّا سَحْرٌ يُؤْسَرُ Then he said, you know what? This is not but magic. Imitated. إِنَّ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرِ And it is, indeed it is not but, uh, but the word of a human being. So this is where he started saying, so now here they are going against Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they are talking Things against Rasulullah in a way that is, you can think of it as a propaganda against the Rasulullah's personality. Okay, purpose of us is not just learning see right here, now like this, as we are repeating the stories which are mentioned already in the books of the hadith, books of, of the tafsir and stuff. We can find the very same things today as well. We start calling for the da'wah of Islam, people will start labeling. And when they're labeling, they're not labeling the, the believers that the things do not match. They will try to come up with something that will match the real, some, some parts of the reality. Like for example, keep showing a person's picture with the beard. And then you show something else that bad is happening. 
Then keep showing uh, the person who's speaking Arabic or the person, the person who's from a uh, bag, Muslim background kind of a country. And then you suddenly start showing something bad and try to link those things, two, two things together. Or take the outliers of a society and start saying all of them are doing this or this message is calling for all this. Or take a specific ayat out of context and then start repeating in front of the people and portraying as if Islam is about this. See? So you find the very similar tactics of the shaitan are repeated. Very same things are repeated. Things, see, you may find the means have changed. Now you will have a, a, a internet or a, 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 a TV or the movies or, 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 or this type or that type. But, but the, if you look at the, the, the core of it, the crux of it, it's the same thing. To propagate false information so create a smoke screen in front of Islam, people may not be able to see what the real Islam is. And the very same thing is happening when you call for the Islam as a way of life. People have no problem when you call for Islam, which is for only individualistic things. This is what we have to think about. Even the Prophet when he was calling for the Islam in the beginning to certain individuals for up to three years, the Quraysh did not go against them. They did not create problems for them. The moment Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started talking about changing the society, he started calling the da'wah, which is about the societal change, now everything changed. Now they started propaganda against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we'll see that not only that they stopped there, rather they started actually <coughs> torturing the sahaba also. But about Rasulullah sallallahu and the weak ones in the beginning, <coughs> what they did was, uh, in one of the ayat, Allah azza wa jal says, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرُ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ Now, the kuffar, they started calling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa at one point, that he is إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ <laughs> That he is, he is crazy, <laughs> as if he's crazy. وَعَجِبُ وَنْجَعَهُمْ مُنْذِرُ مِنْهُمْ وَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا ثَاهِرُ كَذَّابِ in another place, they start saying, he's a magician, he's a liar. Uh, uh, and it goes on and on. And Zakallah <clears> khair. <throat> and the, uh, some of the people who were weak, who accepted the da'wah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi so they start saying, man Allah alayhi min baynina, that Allah has favored from us, from among us these people. Who are the, the, the weak ones who are coming into Islam? And they say, Alayhi Allah, Ya Alamu Bishakri. Doesn't Allah know who are the grateful ones? The one who are the really, uh, the one who's thanking in that sense is because they are the blessed ones. They thought of it, if you are, have, you have uh, wealth in this dunya, it means you are the one who have the higher status. They are the ones who are more worthy of accepting the, 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 the truth. And uh, other part says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أَجْرَمُوا كَانُوا مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا يَدْحَكُونَ وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِهِمْ يَدْغَامَزُونَ Look, this is a very interesting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here. The one, verily, doing the worldly life, those who committed crimes used to laugh at those who believed. And whenever they passed by, they used to wink one to another. And we find that sometimes, even when we try to go, when you go and do the da'wah among, uh, among the people, you find the ones who do not want to listen to what you have to say. Even though you are talking about what Quran and Sunnah says, they will be, to their kind of a people, they will be winking to each other. Let them talk, it's okay. Yeah? They will be winking. He will be over soon. Or he's an idiot talking about Islam. Things like this. We find today even the very same way. That how people ridicule Islam and the one who are calling towards the Islam. Then they used to try to distort the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, they, they did the, the propaganda this way and they used to say, Asatiru al awwaleen aktatabaha fahiya tumla alayhi bukratan wasila. That these are the tales of the ancient people. And this is one of the things that the kuffar whether in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or other times they used to say that these are just the tales of the previous people. 
that uh, Rasulullah is saying, and then they used to say as if that uh, it, if he has been dictated these tales by somebody else, he's just writing and making people listen. Inna hada illa ifkun aftarahu alihi qawmun akharun. They used to say that this is, as in the Quran says, uh, this Quran is nothing but a lie. That he, Rasulullah sallam, has invented and others have have helped him at it. Look, one of the interesting th- thing about the Quran is the kuffar of the, 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 the Mecca, they are very well aware of this, that these are not the words of Rasulullah because they were very good at the Arabic language. They were very good at it. And they knew the difference between the language of the Quran and language of Muhammad They could tell this is not his language. So they never accused him as if he is coming up with this word. They always said... Some- Thank you for listening to this podcast. Podcasts on current events, Islamic guidance, Quran, Tafsir, and Sira are available at islampodcasts.com as well as on iTunes. Rate, review, and comment and let us know how we can grow in our knowledge to better serve our community. Please subscribe, share, and tell a friend about islampodcasts.com.